Good morning to everyone. It's wonderful to be able to be here today in the house of the Lord, to be able to come together to worship Him. And to talk about the worship, you know, as, as we come together and as we worship in the voice of song, as we lift our voices toward God, that is a time to condition our heart, to get us to focus on Him and His goodness and His greatness and how he is, what He has done for us in our lives. So as we come in that worship time, I pray that you seek it as that and that you take that time to prepare your heart to be able to hear the Word of God, that you can put everything aside for just a few moments as we come together today. Again, we thank you for the, being here today. And if you have your Bibles this morning, we're going to be reading out of the book of Psalms in the 118th chapter. And as we get started today, I, I had a thought. And the thing I'd like to say is, is this is the day. This is the day. And I want to ask you something. Have you ever got up in the morning sometime and said, this is the day that I'm going to start that new diet? I've done that a lot. <laughs> Have you ever got up in the morning and said, this is the day I'm going, to, I'm going to clean out that closet. I'm going to do this or do that. In other words, we, we awake afresh, and in the morning we have good intentions about what we're going to do. I think we've all done that in some form or fashion. This, this is the day we're going to do this or this is that. But as the psalmist David writes here in the 118th Psalm, in the 24th verse exactly, he talks about this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Dr. Robert Schuler from out at the Crystal Cathedral in California used that verse for some 40, 50 years as he would begin his services. And over the years, I've, I've read that verse and I've studied that verse and, and, and I've, I've, I've looked at that and tried to understand exactly what's being said there. And all the time I've had this idea of is this is the day that God has created. And since God has created it, it is a good day. Amen. And since it is a good day that God has created, then I should be able to rejoice. I should be able to give praise to him. I ought to do that. It, it is an obligation that I have. And, and I've looked at it that way. And I believe that is still true. God has given us another day of life. You know, a lot of people say, well, I woke up this morning, my back was hurting, my, my neck was hurting, my legs were hurting, I had this problem, I had that problem. But you know what? Thank God you've got those problems because that means that you're still alive. Now, that doesn't mean I'm not ready to go on and be with the Lord. But he has blessed us with another day. As we begin to think about that a lot, sometime I, I read this uh, story that I found in there was an old Baptist preacher back in the early 1900s. His name was Frank Borman, F.W. Borman. A lot of people knew him as that. And, and he told this story one time about this lady as he was pastoring in his young ministry. And I want to read you this story, and it's talking about this is the day. And when I read this, it, it, it kind of gave me a, a different uh, idea or maybe a, a, a deeper idea understanding of what that verse was saying. Frank Borman says, I saw an inscription on the window pane of a, wife, a widowed pastor's wife's home. Her name was Old Bessie. He questioned her and she said, I never thought that when I wrote that on the glass that it would draw such an attention. She said, you see, I've had a lot of trouble in my life. I've had great sorrow and I've been one to worry a lot. I was always afraid of what was going to happen tomorrow. And I didn't know what was going to be. And each morning when I woke up, I felt as the whole weight of the world was on my shoulders. One day, when I was very upset about things, I was reading in my, former, my husband's Bible. And I came across the 118th Psalm. And as I began to read that, I read down through to I got to verse 24. And she said, then I stopped. It said, this is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. She said, I looked at that particular reference to see what day it was talking about. She said, I couldn't find a reference to it. So she said, then it occurred to me that this day is today. That this day is the day that God has made. She said, 
being excited about that, she said, I remembered that the young man had been working on her window panes, and he had a little lead tool or a little gla- a diamond tool that he would take and inscribe on the glass panes. She said, I picked it up, and I opened up my shade on my window of my bedroom, and I began to inscribe the best that I could with that little diamond tool. This is the day. This is the day. She said, I thought from that time forward, every morning when I'd open my window or open my shade and I'd look through that window, I'd see this inscription and it would cause me to remember this is the day that God has made. And since he has made it, it is good and I will rejoice. He is with me. What shall I have to fear if God made the day? I found out later after reading some different things that old Bessie's story carried to a lot of different sermons. There's a lot of truth in it. What do we have to fear because today is the day that God has made? And as we begin to think more about that, and I looked at that verse some time ago, I began to get even a deeper meaning to it. And to be able to understand that, I think we need to go back and begin in the verse verse of the chapter of 118 on the, of the psalm and read down through that. And as we read these words today, I want you to, to hear what the psalmist David was saying. David was speaking from his heart. And as he spoke from his heart, hear what he was saying, how he was praising God, how he was saying that he would trust in God, how he was all about his mercy that God had given him in his life. And then after he summarizes these things, he comes down and he said, and this is the day. This is the day. If you have your Bibles and like to read with us, beginning in the first verse, it says, O give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, because his mercy endureth forever. Let Israel now say that his mercy endureth forever. Let the house of Aaron now say that his mercy endureth forever. Let them now that fear the Lord say his mercy endureth forever. I called upon the Lord in my distress. The Lord answered me and set me in a large place. The Lord is on my side. I will not fear what man can do unto me. The Lord taketh my part with them that help me. Therefore shall I see my desire upon them that hate me. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put trust and confidence in man. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in princes. All nations compass me about, but in the name of the Lord I will destroy them. They compass me about, yea, they compass me about, but in the name of the Lord I will destroy them. They compass me about like bees, and they quenched as the fire of thorns. For in the name of the Lord I will destroy them. Thou hast thrust sore at me that I might fall, but the Lord helped me. The Lord is my strength and my song and has become my salvation. The voice of rejoicing and salvation is in the tabernacles of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord doth valiantly. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord doth valiantly. I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. The Lord hath chastened me sore but he hath not given me over to death. Open to me the gates of righteousness, and I will go in them, and I will praise the Lord. This is the gate the Lord into, the, into, the, into righteousness shall enter. I will praise thee, for thou hast heard me, and art become my salvation. The stones which the builder refused is become the headstone of the corner. This is the Lord's doing. It is his marvelous, is it marvelous in our eyes. This is the day which the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Let us pray. Kind and gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day and this opportunity to be able to be in your house. We thank you, God, that your love and your mercy and your grace is so wonderful that it could save a sinner like me and anyone, anyone upon this earth. God, we thank you that you, you are here with us today. 
We pray that you'll be glorified and exalted in everything that is said and done. And help us to remember, this is the day you have created. This is the day you have ordained. And God, we ask these things in the blessed name of thy son, Jesus. Amen. As we read these, as we read these verses, we see the depth of David's desire and love toward God. We see that he says that I place my trust in him. I, I rely upon his mercy in my life. And we see that as he goes through this, he's building and he's building. And then he comes down to this verse that we want to focus on for just a few moments today. Where he says, this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. But as we back up just one verse, we see where there he said, the cornerstone. And that's what caught my attention as I began to look at this verse again. When he's talking about the cornerstone, he's talking about Christ. Amen. He's talking about Jesus. And we say, well, now David was many years before Christ. Well, this was a prophetic uh, words that David was delivering to the people and delivering to us today. Prophetic in that he was looking forward to Christ. Amen. Now, some of the people that I've read after said that, that as, da as David was writing that, he was foreseeing the time of Jesus' birth. Some people say, well, he was looking at the time that, that Jesus would make a triumphal entry into Jerusalem. You remember that? Psalm Sunday, Palm Sunday. Some say that it was when Jesus was hanging on the cross and he breathed his last breath. And some others say that is when Jesus was resurrected. I believe they're all true. Because each one of those is days for us to look at. And to be able to look at that day now in retrospect, but David in his ideal looking forward, but we look at it in retrospect to understand that each one of those days is important. Jesus' birth, Jesus' life, when he came into the city to be able to be crucified, when he was crucified, and when he was resurrected. So is it just enough to say today's the day that the Lord has made? And I'm obligated to be glad in it. That I'm obligated to be rejoicing. Well, let me ask you something. Think about this for just a few moments. What if that day that he was talking about, as we've talked here, is the day that he comes back? Is that a day to rejoice? That's a day of rejoicing, folks. Now, it's a day of rejoicing for those that know Jesus is their Lord and their Savior. For those that don't, it's a bad day. But to look at this time and say, I don't have to have the circumstances of life around me perfect all the time. My happiness, my joy, my peace comes not from being comfortable where I'm at. My peace and my love and my joy and my happiness, all of these things come in knowing that one day I'm going to be able to spend eternity with my Creator in a place called heaven. A place that He said that the eye hath not seen, the ear hath not heard. How great and how wonderful things that God has for those who love Him. So when we begin to look at the circumstances of life around us, when we begin to see the darkness, the clouds, and all of the things that are not good, are we just to say, oh, it's great. No, it's time for us to look toward God. You see, I, I think there's two ways of looking at things here. There's a kingdom way of looking at it and the worldly way. Now, the world would look at circumstances of life and say, well, it's too hot today. It's too cold. There's too much sickness, there's too much pain, there's too much heartache, the, the, I don't like this, I'm uncomfortable, things are just not good. You know, COVID-19 is going on, the political situation is going on, all of these things just creating turmoil in my life, and, and, and say, oh, woe is me. And then there's a kingdom way of looking at it, and saying, this is the day the Lord's made. I will rejoice. Because I can look forward to the time that I'll be able to spend eternity with him in heaven. And to know that while I'm here upon this earth, and as I'm walking upon this earth, he is not just walking beside me. He is not just there to hold my hand. He's not just there to put his arm around me. He is there picking me up and carrying me. Amen? Amen. Have you ever been carried by the Lord in a time of trouble? Amen. You ever been carried by the Lord 
when you've had down times, dark times in your life? We've all seen that, that little inscription, that little painting or picture talking about the sand and the footsteps in the sand. I love that because what it says is, it says, the guy's saying, he said, Lord, I see when things were good in my life that there were two sets of footsteps in the sand. You were walking with me. He said, but when the dark times of life are there and things get bad, I just see one. He said, why did you walk away? And the little inscription says, God said to him, that's when I was carrying you, brother. That's when I was carrying you, child. You see, God carries us through a lot of situations. My desire, my, my wish is when the pain comes, when the circumstances of life are not what I like, when all of this mess that's going on in the world today is out there, my desire is, is, is just remove all of that. Amen? We want it gone. But you know what? He carries us a lot of times. And I want to ask you this. Where do you find that you grow the most in your faith? Where do you find that you, you find strength the most? And when he removes you from the situation? Or when he carries you through. When he carries us through. Amen. Because then we experience God. We experience his peace. We experience his, his love. We experience his, his mighty power in our life to be able to bring us through the situations. You know, a few Sundays ago, Joey was standing here before us. And after he lost his mom, and I know the things that happened in his life. And, and I, I sat right over there, and I thought for just a few moments, I thought, boy, he's putting on a good face today. And the Lord told me, he said, no, that's not a face. So, and he said, that's me carrying him. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice. Because even if things aren't the way that I want them, even if things aren't, Good as I would understand it to be good. He's carrying me through it. Let's look back into the Bible, into some of the New Testament times. We all know the story of Paul and Silas when they were in Philippi. They were going about preaching and teaching about Jesus. Situation arose, and as that situation arose, people up, rose up against them and took them and beat them. Beat them. I'm not talking about just kind of slapping. They beat them to the point that they passed out. You ever been beaten to the point you passed out? I never have. I, I don't want to be there. If you have, you probably know it's a pretty bad place. They were beaten to that point. They took and they drugged them and they threw them into the innermost part of the prison. And it says in the Bible there where that as they begin to awake and come to themselves, they begin to pray. And sing praises to God. Now I want to ask you something. Was their circumstances of life good? Was everything the way they wanted it? Was, was, was they had plenty to eat? They'd been treated nicely? Friends loved them? Patted them on the back? No. Absolutely not. They were in a prison after being beaten. How is it? How is it that Paul and Silas could do that? How is it that when they awake from being beaten, that they begin to open their eyes, they see where they're at, their legs are in stocks, their chains, and, and that they can praise God? It wasn't because their circumstances was good. It's because they knew. They knew who God was. And they knew that God had given them another day, another opportunity to praise him and to let him be known. Lee always told the young people that. Purpose is, is to praise him and to let him be known. They had an opportunity. You know, as they were there in that prison, in that jail cell, I wouldn't have thought about being able to witness to other people. <clears throat> but they did. They did through their praise of God. Said the rest of the prisoners heard what was going on. And even to the point that the old Philippian jailer came to the knowledge of Christ. Even in the midst of terrible circumstances, circumstances of which I doubt any one of us have ever had to face or come close to. They were able to do that. It was because of the power of God in their life. The Holy Spirit of God living within them. And as that Holy Spirit lived within them and they began to come to themselves, they said... 
I'm looking at this as a kingdom opportunity. God loves me. God's taking care of me, and he's giving me another day. Paul said, for me to live is Christ, to die is gain. Paul realized that every day of his life that he was there to glorify God, not to be comfortable. And, 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 and hey, let's back up just a minute. Let's hold on. I'm not against being comfortable. I really like being comfortable. But is that my main focus? Is that where I put all of my energy and my effort toward being comfortable? I hate to say it has been at times. But is that where we should? Should we put our focus toward glorifying God? Should we put our focus toward making him known to the rest of the world around us so that others might be able to enjoy that which we have? I think that's what Paul was about. It's what Silas was about. And even David was about that. Through his writings of these psalms that God gave him these words into his heart and his soul, he writes those and people hear those. They put those into songs. That's where it's called psalms. People would sing these things and it would bring joy to people. It would lift people's souls up to realize, to help them to realize how great God is and how wonderful he is in their life and how he carries them through the circumstances of life. See, all of these things come together to say, this day is the day that the Lord has made. Now, I know personally, those people in this church that have suffered greatly here in the past few months, loss of loved ones, sickness, problems at home, problems at work. And let's face it, just this whole issue of the COVID stuff going on, it's not been fun. But do we allow the things of this world to bog us down? Do we allow the circumstances of life to dictate who we are? If you know Christ, you are a Christian. You're a child of the King. Your Father has everything. He, didn't caught, he wasn't caught by surprise by this, this COVID-19 stuff. No, not at all. He knew what was going to happen. He has it all in his hands. Okay? Think about this. Your life is in his hands. Everything is in his hands. There is nothing that can get away from you. There is nothing that can slip through, including you. Now, if you're here today and you don't know Christ as your Savior, you may say, well, I, 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 I ain't able to experience that. Well, let me tell you something. If you're here today, you live under the graciousness of God. He gives you the air to breathe. Whether you're a Christian or not, he gives you the air to breathe. He gives you the ability to go to work, make money, buy food, to clothe your family, to feed your family. He does all of that. But if you don't know him as your Savior, if you don't know Jesus as your Lord of your life, then you can't experience this joy that I'm talking about. You can't truly understand what it means when it says, this is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. So today as we're here, I ask you to consider, where are you at? You're a Christian that's been drugged down by the mire and the muck of all the stuff that's going on in the world today? Have you allowed the circumstances of life to dictate who you are, how you act, what you say, what you focus on? If you have, you know, one of the greatest things about God is, he says, I can help you turn that just like that. Put your attention on me. Put your focus on me and what I'm doing in your life. Look for where I'm guiding you and directing you. I'm giving you opportunity to share with other people about who I am. It's the greatest time in the world to be able to share about Christ. Because during this time, people are distraught, people are depressed, people are in, 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 in dire straits. And if we can give them some light, which is Christ, what wonderful thing could that cause to happen in their lives? Awesome, isn't it? The light of Christ will dispel all of that darkness. 
Does that mean all those things go away? Does that mean all the political stuff? No, it doesn't. They're still there. But my focus is going to be on Christ. My focus wants to be on Him so that I can wake every morning and say, Thank you, Lord. It's another day that you've given me. I don't care about the circumstances of the world. You'll take care of them. You know, back during Paul's time, you never saw him being wrapped up with all of what the Romans was doing, all the stuff that they was causing with problems with the children of Israel. He didn't see him getting caught up in all that mess. He was focused on Christ. How better of life can you have? How much more full of life can you have if you'll wake every morning thankful for what God has given you today and knowing what he has for you tomorrow? If you're here today and you don't know Christ, let me tell you, you can have all of what we've talked about and so much more. People have told me before, well, you just don't understand where I'm at. You, you don't know what I've done, and I, and I don't. But I know this. I know that Christ has the ability to wash away all sin. All sin. It doesn't matter how evil, how bad it is in our eyes. His blood, one drop, washes it all away. And he can do that for you today. As they come and they bring a song, I want you to think about this. This is the day that God has made. Will you rejoice and be glad in it? Or will you be drawn down by the circumstances of life as we stand?